طلاب العربية طالبات العربية مرحبا بكم من جديد في المنحة ودرسنا اليوم الدرس الثامن والعشرون هو الإعراب Marking words at the end so that we can actually see the role that they play in the sentence وضعوا حركات على آخر الكلمات لتبيين وظيفتها so your subject is marked in a certain way, your object is marked in a certain way. If a word comes after a preposition, it's also marked at its end so that you know the role that these words are playing. This is extremely important in Arabic because it means that the order of sentences can be very fluid and very flexible. Whereas in English, you depend on order. If you said, the boy read the book, you cannot change the order of this sentence if you said, read the boy the book, or the book, read the boy, is not possible because you depend on order. However, in Arabic, each one of these will be some, as if you are coloring it. You put an ending on the word, and then the word will be recognized as subject, regardless of where it is. This is very useful in emphasis, very useful in poetry, as, as you can imagine, as poetry is all about arranging words and putting them in a certain way. So, mitha. قرأ الطلاب الكتاب منذ أسبوعين. So this sentence says, the male students read the book two weeks ago. And we marked in color so that you see basically how each of these parts is playing a different role. Notice this dhamma on الطلاب. It makes it فاعل مرفوع, meaning it is subject in a verbal sentence and it has the dhamma to show the rafa, the case ending for a subject in a verbal sentence. Al kitaba is ending with the fatha. It's maf'ulun bihi mansubun, meaning it's the object of the verb and therefore it has to take a fatha and be mansub. Now, mundu usbu'aini, the word usbu'aini, aini, remember is the way we mark the dual at the end in the case of al jar now. So, because it came after the expression, the word mundu, which means since, it has to be in al majru. There are two kinds of words in, in Arabic. Some are covered by al-Arab, some are outside of al-Arab. So, al-Mu'arabu wal mabni Al-Mu'arabu are the words on which you could put endings and mark. Al-Mabni are the words that you cannot mark. They actually will appear the same way all the time regardless of their role. So, تتغير حركته حسب وظيفته So the function of a word that is معرب changes, uh, the, the, the voweling, uh, excuse me, changes depending on its function in the sentence. Now, المبني لا تتغير حركته بتغير وظيفته Meaning that it does not show a sign or does not change according to the change of its uh, function in the sentence. There are very few of these words and cases, and most of the words in Arabic are marked. So take a look at the examples here. حَضَرَتِ الْأُسْتَاذَةُ الْأُسْتَاذَةُ now in blue is marked with the dhamma at the end. It's fa'il. It's subject in a verbal sentence. قَابَلْتُ الْأُسْتَاذَةَ now, الأستاذة تا is marked by a fatha at the end. It's مفعول بي. I met the female professor, so she's object. تكلمت مع الأستاذة. I spoke with the, the female professor. Now, الأستاذة T مجرور that كسرة is due to the use of مع before الأستاذة. This is an example of a word that is معرب, that shows clearly with its endings its function in the sentence. Now, look at the following examples and you see how the word men in all of these cases does not change and stays fixed. So, من حضر It's fa'il. Who came? It's supposed to be actually the subject of the sentence, but it remains the same. It cannot show a dhamma in this case. من قابلت مفعول به whom did you meet? Now notice the whom in English as a, a remnant actually of a case system that used to exist in English. 
right? مع من تكلمت with whom did I speak with whom once again the man here is مجرور بمع it came after مع however unlike الأستاذتي it cannot show a كسرة in its end so what are the words actually that are مبني من أقسام الكلام المبنية that would not have their endings marked with vowels الضمائر pronouns of course would be a category of these أنا أنتنا ها نا cannot vary and cannot change even though we know that attached and detached pronouns play different roles however they still are not marked by dhammas fatha or kasra at the end asma'ul isharati that we saw in a recent lesson meaning demonstratives also are fixed hadha ha'ula'i tilka illa al-muthanna except for the dual the dual has to be marked with a case ending in this case look hadhani hatani it could be hadhaini, hataini. So the alif noon at the end is marking the case. Al ismu al mausu, relative pronouns. Al ladi, al lati, al lawati. Once again, the dual is different because the dual is marked very specifically. Al latani, al lataini. So dependent on your case ending and what this the word al latani is relating to, you can use either form. And we get to that soon. Al-huruf, prepositions in general, and adverbials. Min, ma, hal, ma. Now, hal is obviously a question word, but hal does not change and will not acquire any of those endings. Fal-arabu fil haqiqati min nawai. It has two types. Lafdiyun, yumkinu an nara alamatahu. So you could actually see the marking of the case ending at the end of the word or taqdiriyun that actually you estimate it, you cannot see the ending but you can estimate what it is so look at the examples to illustrate this point jaa al-waladu ra'aytu al-walada mashaytu ma'a al-waladi in the word al-walad we can mark the ending with a dhamma fatha or kasra depending on the role that it's playing in the function in the sentence. However, if we take a word like al-fata, we cannot mark the word al-fata at the end. The word al-fata is not exactly a mabni. It is a word that's ending in a specific way that doesn't allow us actually to show the ending. So, جاء الفتى رأيت الفتى مشيت مع الفتى. In all of these cases, you cannot put a dhamma, fatha, or kasra on the alif maqsur. Two things to pay attention to is the ya of al milkiya when you say kitabi and al alif maqsura like in words like al fata absorb the case ending and do not show it. So if the word kitabi was subject or object or the object of a preposition, it would still be kitabi ending with a ya. Now let's talk about the markings. Or the signs of al-Arab. Alamatu al-Arabi. There are two types: asliya, meaning original, and faraiya, which mean secondary. Now let's focus for a minute on al-asliya. Al-asliya, kama ra'ayna fil amthila, as we saw in many of our examples, al-dhammatu. So if you see a dhamma, it's al-rafu. That's that case. Al-waladu or waladun whether it's definite or indefinite, whether it's one dhamma or two, it is marking al-raf'a. Al-fathatu hiya lil-nasbi. Al-nasbu yimkun an narahu huna al-walada aw waladan. Now notice there is an extra alif that's added to this word to mark its ending. Al-kasratu hiya alamatu al-jarri. Fal-jarru narahu huna fi al-waladi wa waladin. So these three vowels are actually the main markers and the original al-alamat al-asliya lil-a'rab. Now let's think a little bit about al-alamat alamat al-a'rab al-fara'iyyati. Wa alamat al-a'rab al-fara'iyyatu hiya fi al-haqiqa tadum kama taroun khamsat anwa' min al-asma. I will not go extremely in detail into this. 
However, it's very important for us to see the first two categories especially. The rest of the categories will actually explain more and delve into more in the future, inshallah. So, Jamal al mudakkari salimi so the sound masculine plural, if you remember, the plural of the masculine could be regular or irregular. So, Jamal al mudakkari salimi rafa is no longer one dhamma but una at the end. So you say muwaddafuna and you use ina بالنسبة للنصب والجر you say muwaddafina if it is taking a fatha or a kasra so you no longer putting one dhamma fatha or kasra you're actually marking the word now with a waw noon or a ya noon fatha look at the muthanna the muthanna takes any so the alif and the noon with the kasra on it are actually the case of a rafa. So instead of a dhamma, you use alif, noon, kasr. Aini, بالنسبتي للنصبي والجر. Look at the examples here so that you hear a little bit how they would ring. جاء المدرسون رأيت المدرسين ومشيت مع المدرسين So when it is subject here in the first one, in a verbal sentence, the waw noon is staying, coming in the stead of a dhamma by itself. Listen to the duel now. جاء المدرسان رأيت المدرسين ومشيت مع المدرسين Notice مدرسين مدرسين That's a distinction between the plural and the duel. Now other nouns that take علامات العرب الفرعية هي الأسماء الخمسة an example of them is the wudadi. There are five nouns and they're marked in their ending in a very complete different way. Look, the waw instead of a dhamma, the alif instead of a fatha, and a ya instead of a kasr. Al ism al manqus behaves very differently in Arabic. Qadin is supposed to be in al marfu'a, but because it has a ya at its end, it drops it, and what we see instead are two kasras instead of the dhammas. We have to also recognize it as, as, as a marfu'a, even though it doesn't have, you know, a marking of a dhamma at the end. Qadiyan recovers al mansub and we can see the fatha in this case. Al-ism al-maqsur huwa ism yantahi bi alif maqsur. So, kalimat mustawa, li al-haqiqati yumkin an naqula, mustawan, mustawan, la tatagayyar, wal fathatan takunani ala al-waw. ليس على الألف المقصورة كما قلنا الألف المقصورة في آخر الكلمة does not allow for the marking of the case ending with either ضمة فتحة or كسر شكرا جزيلا طلابي الأعزاء على انتباهكم وأراكم في الدرس القادم